Hi, and welcome to the Freelancer Homebase video, where I explain what the Freelancer Homebase Notion system is all about. And the short answer is that that's the central place where you, as a freelancer, can manage your entire system lightly and without any complicated data structure. So that's a centralized place where there are some key principles about freelancing and businesses applied when it comes to contacts management and project management in particular. And that you can apply to your business as you wish and you can also customize later based on the specific industry and needs that you have. The freelancer home base can also be a collaborative space in case you're not just by yourself but you also collaborate with other people. You can invite team members and assign them tasks and fit the system around your needs. So let's jump into it because um, the fundamental structure of this system is that there are some master databases that you can access here. You can see them. There are eight total master databases and then there is a dashboard. The dashboard is the freelancer home base and on the dashboard you can see some essential information from these master databases but just laid out in one place, namely the dashboard. And in particular, on the dashboard, you have a task inbox following the GTD system where capturing is the first stage to getting things out of your mind so that you can execute and work on what's important for you rather than trying to hold ideas. You execute on ideas. Then there is a section for your tasks where there are multiple views that you can leverage to view your tasks based on the due date or project. There are open deals or potential contracts that you will open with your clients. There are active projects and meeting notes of the week, as well as a calendar view. But to understand the real structure of these databases, let's jump into the master databases, because when we understand the master databases, we can understand what the data looks like in the dashboard and why it looks the way it does. So, Let's start from the left hand side here of this master databases toggle where you can see there are deals, there are clients, there are projects and there are tasks. So deals is the stage before a company becomes your client. So in a CRM or customer relationship management system, a deal is when a client reaches out to you, but you haven't established a contract yet. So they are a lead, they might turn into your client but you're not in a full relationship yet, but there is potential. And this database is for tracking those interactions and making sure that whenever you have a new deal or lead, a new potential client, you keep track of that and you nurture that relationship to make sure that you leverage your best bet to close that client and start a contract with them, as opposed to letting things flow and forgetting about contacting them again. So this is part of the sales management system, let's say, deals. Then there are clients, and these are companies that you work with, and there are projects. So for every company, you will have a project or multiple projects over time. And then there are tasks. So for every project, you will have multiple tasks. On the right-hand side of the master databases, there is more the wiki side resources, documents, your meeting notes, as well as your financial system to keep track of the invoices that you send to your clients at the end of the project. So there is an inspiration database that you might leverage, especially if you are in the design industry, let's say, you might capture your inspiration in this database to reference whenever you need it. There is a resources database where you can keep your documents to start standardizing your procedures, because if you want to grow your business, maybe, maybe that's your aspiration, maybe not, that's okay. But having documents and clear standard operating procedures or project proposals for your clients can be very useful over time if you want to scale or if you just want to be more organized and optimize your time that's, that you spend working. And there are meeting notes. So meeting notes is a database where you can keep track of your meetings with your clients for your projects, as well as for your leads or deals. 
And finally, there are invoices where you can manage your finances. Very likely, this is not a detailed system for financial management. It's very light, simple, but it does the job to keep track of monthly, yearly, quarterly revenues um, for your invoices. And it can also serve you as the way to keep track of the invoices that you send to your clients, making sure that you don't forget about them. So let's view some of these databases starting from deals. So deals is mainly a pipeline where you have new lead, discussion, proposal sent, closed one, closed lost. These are the stages and these are default stages that we have, but that you can customize based on your specific needs by changing the name of this stage or adding new stages right here. But when I open a new deal, these are the main properties that you can find in this database. There is the source and these are some example sources. It can be a direct email source through your website or a referral. The status is what we have in the pipeline. The contact name right here. The contact email address here. There is a relation to the client's database where if a deal becomes a client, namely it becomes closed one, then you will want to create a client in the client's database, which is related right here. And there is also a relation to a project. And this might be helpful for financial purposes so that you can estimate the revenue or the price for this deal when sending a proposal to the client. And when you open a new project for this client, then you can relate that project to, back to this deal to make sure that the entire system is harmoniously communicating with itself, making sure that the data is scalable and you can clearly reference back to a deal from a project or to a project from a deal. And there is contract type, if it's fixed price, hourly, monthly retainer, weekly retainer, and you can add whatever tag you need for a contract type that you might have as a freelancer. Rate, total hours slash units, and the total amount is output here. So this is particularly useful if you have an hourly rate or a monthly retainer. Let's say if I have a monthly retainer with this deal, $100 for 12 months, I know this is going to be $1,200 in total deal value. And then there is the close date. So the close date is when you close this deal, which means when the status becomes closed one. That's the close date. And when you open the deal page, you can use a template to have some notes about this deal, maybe about your interactions in the first phase of your contact here. And then you can also create a project directly from here when the deal is closed one. Now let's go back to the freelancer home base. And so clients is a quite simple database where you have the company, you have some key properties for the contact name, some relations, there is a logo, and the client page is particularly relevant if you want to have a dashboard at the client level where you can see all the projects, tasks, resources for that client. This is very useful because it centralizes information from some key databases that we haven't seen yet and places that information in one place in the client dashboard where you can see everything that's going on for that client at any given time if you properly maintain this system like resources right here, projects, tasks, meeting notes. So whenever you need to reference back the situation for a certain client, here you have the source of truth. If you use the system properly and scalably over time. Then projects and tasks is a quite standard setup for a project management system. So there is a relation between projects and tasks because every project can have multiple tasks. And so whenever you open a new project, there is a status, there is the client right here, which is a relation property that you can take from the client's database, the timeline of the project that you can define by toggling end date on. And then you have the project type that's taken from the deal associated with it and the progress bar as well, which let's say if this is in progress, the progress bar is going to show up here and it will be updated based on the tasks 
completed for this project in particular. And the product page as well, when using the template, becomes a dashboard of sorts where you can see all the information for that product, starting from resources all the way to tasks and meeting notes. Tasks are the very ultimate level of action in this project management system. Tasks are what you execute on a daily basis to progress your product and contract with the client until completion. And tasks can be added here from the inbox whenever you have a new task coming up in your mind. You can add them right here and you can manage them right here in these specific views that are using some key criteria as filters. Inspiration is a very simple database where there is a table, there is a gallery, and here the idea is that you can capture any inspiration that you come across, maybe on the web, through the Notion Web Clipper if you want, or manually if you prefer, and every inspiration can have a tag that you can add or remove from here, URL and date created, which is automatic. And then maybe on the page itself, you can paste the video, if it's a video, for example, the article, bookmark, if it's an article, or pictures, if you are a designer, for example, and you have come across a design inspiration that you want to reference back in case you need it. Next up, resources. So resources, as I said, is the place where you can keep track and manage your procedures, your project proposals, and all those documents that can be useful for you when dealing with a client and a project. So you can create them directly, natively in Notion, or you also have the ability to embed files or upload files, external files, like a Google Doc or an Excel sheet or a PDF right here to reference that file whenever you need it. Meeting notes. Meeting notes is a calendar, but it can also be a table. And there is a template here as well. And the template has a predefined structure with an agenda, items with meeting notes that you can take right here if you want, and next steps in case you want to quickly add new tasks in the tasks database when you are doing a meeting and you're taking notes during that meeting. And when it comes to meetings, you also have a relation to clients and projects that you can define right here at the top of the page in the properties section. And finally, there are invoices and invoices um, all about your finances for your freelance business. And here you can see invoices in very different formats like by month, where every month is a toggle that you can expand and collapse to see the also total amount of money earned or invoiced for that month. You have this month, you have current quarter, this year, last year, just some views of your invoices. And whenever you add a new invoice right here, you're going to give it a name, a date, where when you issued that invoice, you can relate it to the product that invoice is for the amount of money right here. If it's paid, you will check this box, otherwise it is unchecked. And that's useful because when the paid check box is unchecked, that means you need to keep track of that and make sure that the payment comes through at some point. You have notes and you have the invoice file in case you have it outside of Notion. It's a PDF, for example, or a Google Doc. You can embed it right here just as a reference point. And that is invoices and that is the whole freelancer home base system, a central place to manage your entire freelance business without too much involvement in a very light way, but also in a very streamlined and focused manner where every database is fundamental to the overall system and every relational property is key to make the system scalable and sustainably useful over time. Thank you and see you soon.